Hello again and welcome back to another one. And today we have a couple of topics to cover. From chart updates on Eminem's latest album The Death of Slim Shady that showed it only missed out on a double in the United States when it comes to the western major markets around the world. And yes, the delayed Slim Shady vs Marshall debate slash roasting slash therapy session finally dropped. And apart from Eminem getting cooked by Shady and vice versa, some rappers like Ja Rule and even Drake also caught a stray depending on who you ask and we'll be exploring some key moments that went viral on social media. Today we also have more on the Drake vs Kendrick Lamar battle. And this time we got to hear from Drake's associate Leo Yachty who recently started a crap storm based on some of the claims he made about the effects of the battle on Drake and we'll get to more on this in a bit and today we got some gold when it comes to the irony on display as while rapper of the game looks to be in hot water over a case that's haunted him for years when he was accused by Priscilla Rainey for SA on the set of the show She Got Game since we got an update on this lawsuit that could spell trouble for the game seeing as his last album that included Black Slim Shady turned out to be a certified commercial flop. While this was going on, Game was spotted on a show about catching predators and users on the web were quick to call out this irony and put Game on blast and we'll get to this at a lot of part of the video. And before we get started, Eminem's Death of Slim Shady album completed two weeks at number one in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Norway and the United Kingdom and while it couldn't complete the double in the United States, it maintained its position as the most streamed album in the country on its second week. The lack of physicals certainly didn't help matters and moving on, starting with Drake and the effects of the battle with Kendrick, Yachty was recently on the Flagrant podcast and he made some comments that sparked up raw on social media. For instance, he maintained the notion that according to him, Drake has been unfazed by this battle in real life. Check out a snippet. Outside of the people who care about hip hop, bro, you know, like, gives a fuck. at all. They and they, they just want to party. There's some beautiful girl they want to dance with. And they want to yeah. dance to Drake. Yeah. God's plan is going to come on. And then you're going to fucking dance to it. Yeah. yeah. He really, did. he didn't give a fuck. Really? No, no. He, he was, un he was genuinely unfazed. I respected it a lot and I talked to him. He didn't, that shit didn't bother him. As it shouldn't, he's the, he's a fucking guy. But why, if I had $700 million, you could, I would talk to It gotta yeah. bother you a little bit. If you're, you're an artist, you're sensitive. Everybody, you like, feel I mean, the world, you I mean, I mean, you I, obviously you, you, I don't know. I wasn't there. I, like I said, I was in Europe. I wasn't next to him, like, like how I usually do be, but. But he was, I, when I would talk, I never saw him down. Then I, to a point where I just stopped talking to him about it. Cause it was because just, I felt yeah. like I was the one bringing him the negativity. Yeah. Like I was bringing the cloud when I would be like, oh man, man, I hate that this person said this. And like, like it, I was showing him shit he hadn't seen. So then I started realizing, wait, I'm bringing you the negativity. I just realized that he w his energy was, wasn't down. So I wasn't going to try bring him down. Right. And boy, this hasn't gone down well. As when it hit social media, posts like these went viral in response to the snippet. Dude is so unfazed that he banned all TDE shows in Toronto and keeps posting subliminal IG posts. And this is because several TDE affiliates who had shows in Canada since the battle started have been getting shut down. Even Schoolboy Q's show got shut down a few days ago. Although some Drake fans have hit back with takes like, being unfazed doesn't mean you're gonna let people say slash do what they want to disrespect you. Laughing emoji. And Drake fans kept going. He definitely unfazed got all these TDE rappers and dot fans crying like clowns on Twitter. Where's the power and respect? Cause these dudes crying cause they could never stop an OVO performance in any state. But that wasn't all from Yachty as when he was asked about why Drake gets hated on, these were his thoughts. I think people just hate on Drake cause he's like, he's the guy. Mm. It's no like who, feel like there's something extra on it. It's also probably that he's fucked everyone's bitch. Yeah, that's that, mm. my suspicion was like, yo, this shit got to be personal. I mean, he's also that guy though. Mm -hmm. All the records, all the numbers, like he's he's the one. Mm. How hard was that beat for you? Like, you, I'm sure you're friends with everybody in Atlanta. Your friends you shouted out like, in the song. Yeah, any for you. You're being pulled in different directions. You want to be loyal. I just wish I had never spoke on it. 
That's, mm. that's the only thing that like that was the only part. I wish I hadn't said anything about it. And this rebuttal went viral, blaming all the issues Kendrick and most of the other artists' problems with Drake on them hating because he's the most popular, is the most disingenuous, knob slobbing ish I've ever heard. Although some have hit back with, or check this out, maybe since he's in the industry, he's known. Eminem and Jay Z literally made a song warning Drake about people doing this. What are you talking about? This happens all the time in the music industry. Prince, MJ, Bob Marley, etc. But perhaps there's more to this than just Drake being popular, like even Yachty pointed out in the interview. It's also probably that he's fucked everyone's bitch, yeah. Shut the fuck up in 2020! Yo. We know this is reportedly the case when it comes to Joe Budden versus Drake, and I believe there's much more than that when it comes to Drake's hate. But what are your thoughts? And moving on, the Slim Shady versus Marshall debate finally dropped, and boy, several snippets have since gone viral. In fact, we've seen takes about how if this was released before the album dropped, it would have boosted the sales even more. And this segment was one of many that went viral, and in this case, it looks to be directly inspired by Drake's interview after he lost to Pusha T. Drake takes you and like, am I letting you down? Yeah, what I tell you? What did you say to him? Look, man, did you text me after awfully hot coffee pot or not? Yeah, I did. And what did I tell you? He said, he said that, that I, I can never let, like, let you down. You said, um, you said like, I can never like, let you down. <laughs> And this sparked reactions like everybody cooking Drake in 2024 loudly crying emoji, this is hilarious as F, and that awfully hot coffee pot reference, Drake have the worst summer ever. But there was more for Drake in that interview. But before we get to it, would you think it was just some sort of coincidence that I popped through that portal and dropped through the in your poof? All of a sudden magically Eminem's back on top? This man. Yup. I've been sent from the past to save our career. To save my career my 25 year career, where I sold like a billion albums, I think I'm doing pretty fine. Taylor Swift fans are now back on board with Eminem it seems on social media after weeks of trying to cancel the rapper for lyrics on his new album. And all it took was this moment from the interview. You're not Taylor Swift with one era that mattered, mine. And boy, posts like these went viral. Eminem praises Taylor Swift in new video for Complex. But there's more, as Eminem is certainly aware of the narrative on social media, a narrative that also affects rappers like Kendrick Lamar. When I heard your last shit, I thought that shit was AI. Really? So a computer can write rap god? Look man, no one gives a fuck about your lyrical miracles. You're scaring the hoes. And just like we covered on this channel years ago, like when TikTokers discovered Superman, googled the lyrics and got traumatized, like when they discovered the lyrics on Medicine Man and pushed for Eminem to be arrested. Eminem is well aware of these antics, and this one blew up on social media after Slim Shady's rebuttal. The world's changed, people are way more sensitive now. Every other week on TikTok, Gen Z discovers you on Monday and cancels me on Tuesday. Bitch, I wrote Stan! And love the way you lie. And congratulations. You wrote the fucking national anthem for stalkers and domestic abusers. Can we get this guy a glad award or some sh Damn. Relapse fans, you know, those who believe that it is Eminem's best album ever, have been going off over this segment in the interview. Let's talk about the people you dissed. Fucking lyrical titans. Ja Rule, Moby, Fred Durst. Who else? Christina Aguilera? Who's really punching down? Man, who hurt you? Remember we made you? You almost killed our career with that one. Are you fucking kidding me? Go record an entire album in fucking accents. Fucking great, man! I was in recovery, okay? I had to relearn how to rap. And for what it's worth, there's an entire generation of people who think that's a fucking classic. I wouldn't call that relearning the rap. That shit was a frisbee, bro. Then you went on an apology tour for like 12 months after that. And then I made our biggest radio record ever without you. And yes, back to Drake, we got a BBL Dreezy reference that took us back to when the world got reports about Eminem looking like an actual Eminem in real life. Because you almost lost my fucking career, my family, my life. It ain't my fault you got no self-discipline. It's like all these fat people. It's everyone else's fault but yours. Well, the shit you said about overweight people is dated. We cured fatness. There's literally a shot for it. 
It's very popular. My hair's got side effects of jealousy. Damn. Why are you so mad about fucking body positivity? What the fuck is body positivity? Like people feeling okay with their bodies. Oh, well, you mean fat power? Okay, BBL Slizzy. BBL what? What the fuck are you trying to say? I ran 17 miles a day to get us back in shape, fat boy. And overall, the interview has sparked takes like, I'm glad he put this out. It gives the album more context for people who did not get the blatant satire. And moving on, while the game is still haunted by his SA victim, who was awarded over $7 million a few years back, and even back in December, she won a case over the game for using shell companies to hide his assets. And while she is now reportedly coming for his mansion, Check it out. The game's SA accuser files documents to force rapper to sell his Calabasas home and from the report, according to court documents obtained by All Hip Hop, the balance due on the aforementioned judgment is $6.89 million. Rainey and her attorney are asking a judge to order Game to sell his Calabasas home in order to pay part of the debt. They also want to force Game into a court hearing to present his argument as to why it it shouldn't be seized. And these reports already sparked reactions like, no wonder he jumped in unwarranted to side with Dreezy, birds of a feather. Now while this was on, it was irony galore as the game was featured shortly after in a vitally stream to catch predators. Check out a snippet. You just want to do what? I'm not... I mean, you got a sick now, bro. You got a sick now, bro. You got a sickness, bro. You need to kill yourself. And this is part of your this is part of your healing, man. Like what's going on with you? What's going on in your mind? Bro, just bro? answer him. No one's gonna hurt you if you're being honest with us. Just just what's going through your mind? Just tell us. You're not gonna get out of it, homie. Look at hey, look at me, bro. Look at me, homie. Alright. Stop looking down. Look at me. I'm looking at you. So what's going through your mind, bro? I don't know. I was just You tripping, right? You made a fucked up decision? Yeah. You feel good about it? No, I'm horrible. What do you do after this? Do you do it again? You find other no, 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 I'm... And it didn't take long for posts like these to go viral. Do they know? Which sparked reactions like these. Better yet, game went viral a few weeks back when Ruby Rose's old tweets resurfaced that allegedly showed that game and her had something when she was under 18. Bro, like what's going on in your head, bro? And I know how you feel it, right? Say what now? And I know how you feel it, right? Damn. And this became the poster of game catching predators on Twitter. This went viral. The game helping to catch predators. That will be all for today and I'll be looking forward to your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.